Look, there's a million of these videos treading the same ground, talking about the same games, and compiling them into the same top 10 list. I've done this too, two years ago, but with the Quest 2 nearing the end of its life cycle in the face of the Quest 3, and some of the best Quest 2 games having released in just the last year or so, many of which not getting the recognition that they deserve, I wanted to make a definitive final Quest 2 games tier list. This is my opinion, so therefore this is factually accurate and anyone who disagrees with this list should shave their head bald and take up a career in the bowling bin. Also naturally there will be games that I've neglected to include either because one, I forgot about it because I only have a couple of functional neurons left in my brain, or two, I just don't care. This list is representative of games that have remained in the forefront of my mind after all of this time with this headset. Each game will get a ranking from S being oh. An F being hitting a curb in your new 2007 Subaru WRX SDR at 2am like some sort of newly born orangutan. <laughs> First, for the games that everyone already knows and I'm sick of talking about, Super Hot VR, yeah, it's pretty great, A tier. Contractors, easily one of the best VR FPS, insane amount of content, including community content, S tier. Half of Shack, solid game, still getting better, still haven't played it, I still play the PC VR version, A tier, I guess. Slain Sorcery Nomad, seems fine, still haven't played it, I still play the PC VR version, B tier, I guess. Warm, great, arcadey, addictive, fun, A tier. Racket NX, one of the most intense and satisfying VR games, especially with a friend, A tier. Dash Dash World, basically Mario Kart in VR, A tier. Vader Immortal, fun, Star Wars immersion just annoying it's split into three individual paid episodes b tier star wars tales from the galaxy's edge kind of boring at times but still a very good star wars experience b tier iron man vr great triple a vr experience not much replayability a tier resident evil 4 great game great vr port but i'm too scared to finish it because i'm a pussy a tier rec room great daycare simulator b tier beat saber yeah it's good bobby eyelash a tier vr chat too many men pretending to be dogs b tier population one more like i'm about to pop one in my head if i hear about this game again a tier Horizon Worlds more like her I want to die Zom Worlds am I right Mark F tier Okay those are the games I actually want to talk about and if this ends up being useful uh, like and sub would go a long way in me not crashing my Subaru into a curb because I drove in a storm at 2am Breach is released early this year and is basically the most Rainbow Six Siege Rainbow Six Siege of all Rainbow Six Sieges in VR I think most of you probably know this by now unfortunately due to this line being continually parroted by every VR YouTuber under the sun not many people who haven't played the game yet truly really understand just how far ahead this game is from the rest of the VR industry, but instead only know it as Rainbow Six Siege in VR. Which in fairness, it is. Don't get me wrong, Bridge has clearly started as a borderline VR ripoff of Siege, and I don't blame them. I'm all for having Rainbow Six in VR, from the rippling down buildings, spraying detonation foam on windows, and blowing them up as me and the boys swing in to come face to face with Mark and your mother. It's a pretty dope concept on paper, and in practice, does work really well in VR. But beyond this, Bridge has continued to frequently add new maps, full weapon customization, visual upgrades, levels, new animations, with full dedicated developer update videos to go along with these changes. The British development team came in extremely hot with this game. They knew exactly what they were doing. They listened to the community and are still cooking today. It's refreshing to see such a competent VR developer that just gets it. I love this game. I play it with my brother and the teamwork, the ridiculously smooth gameplay, the great optimization and the very clean, colorful art style makes this a borderline perfect VR game in my opinion and by far one of the best VR FPS titles in VR of all time. It's about $30 and is worth every penny. This is an insanely easy S tier. Space Pirate Trainer is an OG VR game. It's been there since the Vibe days, but it got a quest release back in 2019. It's a simple arcade wave shooter. You switch between dual wielding pistols, a shield, a sword that can suck enemies towards you before slicing them in half, all while picking up power ups along the way. I've used this game a lot in the background of videos, and like your mother, it's quick fun, especially with a group of friends taking turns to set the highest score. <laughs> But beyond that, there's not a hot lot there. It's about $20, but I think due to being a pretty small scale single player experience, besides some pretty dope room scale modes, if you have the space, there's just not enough content to put this game any higher than a B tier. Bit of a surprise for a literally now deceased game to be on this list. Or is it? For those of you unaware, Echo VR was, in my opinion, one of the best games on Quest. It was a free to play zero gravity VR version of Ultimate Frisbee. It was simple, but it provided hours of fun and a very high skill ceiling. Until this old bloke shut it down because it allegedly cost too much before months later unveiling new meta AIs based off of Snoop Dogg, world-renowned chef Roy Choi, Mr. Beast and more that are allegedly basically useless and likely cost the company 40 years worth of Echo VR servers. However, the people, the players, more specifically this guy, Xenomega, managed to bring
bring the game back from the dead with an unofficial mod called Echo Relay. Unfortunately, this is at the moment relegated to PC, but it acts as a clear proof of concept that these servers can be run by the community rather than meta and that perhaps a total shutdown was unnecessary. This man is a god amongst men. I apologize that this doesn't exactly fit on a Quest Games tier list, but I wanted to at least shed some light on this. Echo VR, more specifically Echo Relay, gets an easy S tier. Okay, back to a game you can actually play on Quest right now. Stride is still overlooked to this day. It's astonishing to me. Yeah, it's not Gorilla Tag, but the free running, the zip lines, the wall running, the combat, the various game modes, and in my experience, still pretty consistent active community. It makes me scratch my head why this game isn't more popular. It's pretty simple fun, but personally, that's what I want a lot of the time when I throw this headset on and I want to play with some friends. The game has a full single player mode, but personally, the multiplayer is really what provides the most replayability, sweaty moments, and forms the best friendships. I love this game. It's about $15 on the Quest Store. Stride is an easy S tier. Speaking of Stride, once I get up here, this video is sponsored by Joy Way, the developers of Stride's new game, Stride Fates. This is a single player story driven experience closer to that of Mirror's Edge. I played about an hour of the game and graphically, especially on Quest 3, it looks great. It's actually one of the best looking Quest games that I've ever played. The city that you're dropped in in the beginning looks incredible. The parkour is just as good as it was in Stride. There's full combat mechanics, ragdoll physics, a litany of different game mechanics from hacking, stealth, multi-objective levels, looting, crafting, bosses. This is a completely new and separate game from Stride and the developers claim about a solid five to eight hours of gameplay here. It's awesome, especially if like me, you're a huge fan of Stride. And for those of you looking for a true Mirror's Edge VR experience, this is by far the closest that you'll get. Stride Fates just released a few days ago and is about $25. If I have the conversion to pounds correct, the link to the store page is down below. Thank you Joyway for sponsoring this video so I can fix my Subaru rims and probably multiple other suspension components. I love this game. I love these people. This is the team behind Veil VR. Veil VR is a first person shooter, a very good first person shooter. The gunplay, the great range of game modes, the weapons, the utilities, everything here is so clearly made by people who continually play their own game over and over and over again. On the surface, this looks like just another VR FPS, and it is. But in practice, it's such a good VR FPS that so many others just become obsolete. Here's me playing with the devs for about an hour. I haven't had this much fun in VR. I would honestly say in about a full year. The gameplay is so smooth, everything is so functional, the map design for the most part is so clearly directed that getting into seriously competitive beef with the opposing team and sweating it out with your own team to win happens very naturally. And most importantly, the developers actually listen. I mean, really listen. And when I think something's shit and I tell them that it's shit, they listen. Veil was already on this list when I started writing it, but somehow I guess Lord Zuck above knew. And the Veil team reached out to sponsor this segment about how the game is releasing on Quest through App Lab on November 13th. Likely the day that this video is releasing. The game has full crossplay with Steam, and if you already own the game on Steam, you can connect your account to share cosmetics and progression. The full Quest Store release will be in early 2024, along with new guns, maps, and modes. The App Lab link is down below. Go play now. I might see you guys on there. Veil VR gets an easy S tier. Straight up. It's one of the best VR games of all time, if not the best. It's so f***ing simple that it's not even funny. It's actually kind of painful that realistically simulated VR table tennis is more engaging, fun, and addictive than 99% of the quest store. I'm not going to explain. Just trust me. Go buy 11 table tennis now for $30. Play it with a friend if possible. Play it for at least an hour. After that hour, I think you'll understand. Easy S tier. Bone Lab, I have to be honest, is a little rough on the quest too. At least back when I played the game at launch, it suffered from some jank, some performance issues, and just continually being compared to its bigger brother, Boneworks. Look, separate from Boneworks, Bone Lab is a fun story-driven sandbox experience with hours worth of content. Combat, the enemy types, the avatar switching mechanic, the incredible soundtrack, the diverse array of levels. Bone Lab was seriously overhyped and overshadowed due to Boneworks. But a year later, this is genuinely a great game. And despite being a steep $40, it gets an easy A tier. Speaking of great single player games, The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners still to this day is an incredibly well-optimized, well-detailed, satisfying, atmospheric, and at times terrifying story-driven pseudo survival game that provides hours of high quality VR content. However, three years after its initial release, it is still a steep $40 and at least in my opinion does drag a little bit at times. That said, it is still an easy A tier. Yeah, I get it. Screaming kids, difficult to learn movement and overly simplistic, but I think most people who dislike Gorilla Tag quite literally just have not played the game enough. I'm sure there's some exceptions here, but for the most part, the community, although young, is beyond anything I've seen in the entirety of the VR scene. It's passionate, funny, wholesome, and single-handedly has created an entire YouTube genre. But most importantly, the game just gets VR. Too many VR titles in a desperate attempt to appeal to as many people as humanly possible dilute down the VR-related content 
environment in a VR game to reduce motion sickness and increase accessibility, essentially making just a 360 flat screen game with some motion controls. Gorilla Tag understands that it's a VR game. It understands that people who bought a VR headset may actually want to play VR. The movement system takes full advantage of the motion controls and your body movements. Everything is physical. You can identify other players and their skill level just by their movement style. There's a high skill ceiling. The game doesn't try to immediately accommodate you for being sh like so many modern games. It makes you feel like trash because you are. Seeing other players scramble around the map at breakneck speed inspires you to literally physically train and learn the game's movement. It's the most rewarding VR game that I have ever played and it keeps me coming back after years. I truly love this game and I straight up think it's one of the best things to ever happen to VR, period. The popularity reflects that. It is undeniable at this point. Gorilla Tag gets an S tier.